everybody, this is Julie Bean with Be Holic, and in this video we're going to share with you tips for photographing your jewelry. So this is our episode number five in our Tips for Selling Your Handmade Jewelry video series. In previous ones we've covered how to price your jewelry, selling at shows, how to pick the right show for you, how to get ready for it, selling online, all of that good information. And now we're going to talk about photographing your jewelry. If you are selling online, photographs are very, very important. That's what gets people interested in your piece of jewelry and want to click on it and perhaps buy it, which is the goal, of course. So when you are thinking about your photographs in general, and we covered this in the last episode about selling your handmade jewelry, you want your photos to be nice and bright. You don't want too many shadows. You don't want them to be dark. You also want them not to be overly cluttered. So you want to be able to look at the photo and see the piece of jewelry right off. You don't want to be looking and distracted at the background. That's not to say you can't have some things in the background. I love props. I love postcards. I love rocks and little plants. I think those are lovely. Just make sure that what you're seeing first and foremost is the jewelry. Remember the goal of the photograph is to showcase what you've made. Then in addition to that, you'll want to make sure that you show the entire piece of jewelry. So whether it's in one single photo or you've broken it up into several photos, however it is, make sure that people can see every aspect of your design. So if you're making a beautiful bracelet and you have a lovely focal, don't just put one photo of that focal. You want to show the whole piece. People are interested in the type of clasp. They're interested in all your work. You're bridging that gap between them being able to see it in person and then it being online. So make sure you give them as much information as you can through your photographs. So another tip is to show it on somebody. Now that does two things. It makes it so that they can see the scale. They can see how big is that piece of jewelry, but it also shows where. So you imagine if someone's at a show, they might hold it up to their ear, look in a mirror and see what it looks like. They can't do that online, but if you provide a photo that shows someone wearing it, it helps to fill in that gap. And that is gonna help with sales too. So those are just some general tips about the type of, of uh, photographs to have of your jewelry. But how do you get good photos? And this is really hard and it gets easier and it does take practice. So don't get disheartened if you start out and your first photographs are not awesome because it can take time. You've got a lot to figure out. So let's go step by step of what to do. First off, thank goodness, I think there's plenty of camera phones out there that take beautiful photos. You can look online for a specific camera with like a macro lens and take photographs using that. That is of course an option and you can really master that skill. I personally believe you can get a really great photo with the camera um, on your phone, on your cell phone. So we're gonna focus on that versus a, a more professional technical uh, camera that you would buy as like a standalone camera with a special lens. So when you are taking photos, try if you can to use natural light. Natural light is your outside light, but you don't want it to be in the direct sunlight. That's gonna create some shadows. It's gonna be really, really bright. So you want indirect natural light. I always use um, a little spot right by my window. So my window is open. It's not when the light's flooding in, it's when the sun is a little bit further overhead and it's just a nice diffused natural light. And that's what I find works best for me. So that is one big tip and I think that's probably the tip I see most often from photographers is to use natural light when you can. Also, you notice I'm wearing a white shirt. This is actually a tip. And so if you use, if you wear a white shirt, white reflects light, you become your own white reflector, which is pretty awesome. So I always photograph using or wearing, I should say a white, like a white t-shirt. And then you can also just use a piece of white board, like a white piece of cardboard or tag board to use as a white reflector as well. You don't need something fancy. If you are doing white backdrop, uh, backdrops, you can take a big piece of tag board and curve it. And so if you prop it up on your table and you curve it, you just bend it, you don't crease it, you just bend it. It creates a really nice seamless white backdrop. And then on that white backdrop, you can further put your props, put your postcards, put any fabric or whatever you're gonna have as a backdrop down on it. But then that gives you that nice backdrop and it costs under a dollar, which we love, right? It's really nice when you can do things that don't cost a lot of money. So another tip is when you are uh, editing your photos, 
in post. So you've taken your photos and now you're gonna edit them. There's lots of really great free editing programs out there. I'm not gonna name them all. You can do a quick Google search. Your phone might actually already come equipped with it. I would caution against using filters or changing your colors. So you can brighten your photos. You want them to be nice and bright and that's usually a quick and easy setting. But if you start getting really fancy and altering the colors or putting like a rainbow effect on it, you're gonna change what your jewelry actually looks like. So you might've started with a purple and green bracelet, but if you start to play with the, the saturation and you start to play with all these different levels, you might end up with a pink and yellow bracelet. Well, the problem is, is someone's going to see that and think it is actually a pink and yellow bracelet. And then when they get it home, it's gonna be purple and green and it's not gonna be what they ordered. So try as hard as you can to stay true to the actual colors of your jewelry in editing. So another tip is if you um, are working on a bunch of photos and you see that there's some distracting things in the background, crop them out so that you have nicely cropped photos. That's always a, a nice thing to do and it's a really easy thing to do in a photo editing program as well. It just cuts out the excess. So I like that. So those are some quick tips. Another one that uh, is handy is if you have a little bit of a shaky hand, you can use a tripod. So I actually have a tripod that clips to my desk. So it's not like a big standing tripod like you traditionally think about. It's actually just one that clips to my desk and it's really inexpensive. There's also those wiry ones that are like just little wire legs and they're like maybe a foot tall and you just put your phone on it and can point it downwards or point it off to the side and that is good. So a tripod is going to stabilize your phone and give you um, a little bit clearer, less blurry photos. What you can do too is most phones, if you are trying to get something in focus, you can kind of tap the phone a little bit or just move it ever so slightly. I know my phone lets me kind of tap it and that's gonna help to bring it into focus. And make sure that it's your jewelry that's in focus. Again, we're wanting to make sure that the photos are showing the jewelry pieces first and foremost. That is what you are trying to sell. So those are some quick tips for taking photographs of your jewelry. And then in the next series, or the next episode of this series, I should say, we're gonna be covering packing and shipping. So if you want to, uh, as one last thought here, uh, include a picture. If you have some pretty packaging that you provide of your jewelry, include that picture too. It's another selling point. And that's always a good idea. You're trying to give people as many reasons as they can to go ahead and click and purchase your item. Mm -hmm.